Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this video, we're going to cover how to create functions in Excel VBA. So the video is all about how you get procedures to return values. We'll start with the basics of writing a simple function and show you all the things you need to change between writing subroutines. Then we'll talk about how you can call a function, including how to test it using the immediate window. We'll explain how you can create parameters to extend the flexibility of your function and also how you can include optional parameters to make life a little bit easier for the user. Finally, we'll have a quick little chat about how you can rewrite code that you've already written to use functions, which should make it a little bit neater and hopefully an awful lot shorter. So let's get started. A function is simply a procedure which returns a value and they come in handy whenever you find yourself writing out the same calculation steps again and again. To demonstrate the basics of how they work, we're going to write a simple function which returns a nicely formatted version of today's date. To get started, it's similar to the way you begin a subroutine, except instead of writing the word sub, you write the word function instead. Then you need to think of a sensible name for your function, I'm going to call mine custom date. And finally, we should say what type of data this function will return. My function is going to um, take today's date and it's going to return it as a formatted string of text. So at the end of the declaration for my function, I'm going to say as string, similar to how you declare variables and set data types for variables in VBA. When I hit enter, the rest of the function um, declaration is filled in for me. So I get end function and I get a set of parentheses after the, after the function name as well. What we need to do now is write out the code that will calculate the result of the function. Now this function is going to be very simple. In fact, there's only going to be a single line of code in it. And it's the line of code which tells the function which value to return. And whenever you want to tell the function to return the value, you state its name, so in this case, custom date, and then you assign a value to it. So to make this work, we're going to format today's date using a built-in VBA function called format. The expression that I want to format is the function called date. And finally, the format that I want to apply is, let's see, I'm going to go for a, a nice long date format which shows me the full name of the day of the week, um, the double digit day of the month, the full month name, and finally a four digit year. And that's what that code will do. Now obviously this could be a much more complex calculation, the expression that we assign to the return value of the function. But just to demonstrate the principle, this will do for now. So there's our function written. All we have to do now is call it from somewhere to see what value it returns. One simple tool that you can use to test if your function is working is the immediate window. If I head to the view menu at the top of the screen and choose immediate window, I can then ask the immediate window to show me the result of my function. I can do that by typing in a question mark and then the name of the function, custom date, and finally hitting enter. And that tells you what value the function returns. So now that I've established that the function is working, what I can do is use it in an actual procedure. So I'm going to write a subroutine and let's say we want to imagine we're going to insert a new worksheet into my workbook. And every time we insert a new worksheet, we want it to be stamped with today's date. So I'm going to write a sub called create new sheet. And then the first line of code in there will be to create a new worksheet. So I'm going to say worksheets.add. Following that, I'd like to make range A1's value equal to a phrase which says created on followed by whatever today's date is. So I'm going to concatenate that created on using ampersand and now I want to join on the value of my custom date function and to do that I simply refer to my function name again. You'll find you'll, you should be able to see your, uh, your function names in the IntelliSense list. If I press control and space on the keyboard and look for custom date, it should be there. So I can press tab to type the rest of it in. And that is how our function will be called. I'm going to use the F8 key to step through. So you can see that after I've added a new worksheet, when this function is called, you can see that the code will step through all of the instructions in your function. So custom date is currently set to an empty string until we assign a value to it, in which case we assign the formatted version of today's date. And then the end result, if I switch back to Excel quickly, is a new worksheet with that phrase stored in it. So there you go, your first simple example of using basic functions in VBA. At the moment our function is quite simple in that it always returns a formatted version of today's date. 
But what if I wanted to be able to tell my function exactly which data format each time I call it? Well, I can do that by adding a parameter to the function declaration. If you want to add parameters, you list them in the parentheses after the function's name. Think of a sensible name for your parameter. I'm going to call mine date to format and then say what data type the parameter should have. I'm going to say that mine's as a date. One more thing I need to change in order to make sure that my function returns the formatted version of the value that I pass in. I'm going to change the, the code that says format date to format date to format. So now the function will format whatever date I pass in via that parameter. Once you've added a parameter to a function, the way you call it is slightly different as well. So for instance, if I try to run my create new sheet subroutine again, I'll find that I can't because I haven't provided a value to my date to format parameter. I haven't given it an argument. So if I click OK and just reset my subroutine, if I did want to pass a value into this function, I can open a set of parentheses after the custom date function name and it shows me the, uh, a tooltip showing me the list of parameters that I've declared, then I simply have to say what date I want to pass in. So just for the sake of convenience, I'm going to pass in today's date again using the date function. And I'll find that now I've done that, I can run the subroutine again quite happily and it will create another new worksheet that will show me today's format of date. But the way that my function works, I can change this to be any date whatsoever and I should get a formatted version of, of that date. Let's say, oh, it's my brother's birthday this week. He's, he, his birthday is on the 19th of Feb 2014. So let's pass in my brother's birthday. And if we run this subroutine, we should find that we get a new worksheet with a formatted version of that date instead. So there we go. There's how to declare parameters for a function to make them that bit more flexible. You can add more than one parameter to the same function. So I'm going to add a, another parameter which allows us to choose whether or not we include the time in the format that we return. So after the first parameter, I can type in a comma and then specify the name of the next parameter. I'm going to call this include time. And I'm going to say that that is as Boolean. I'm just going to drag my screen across a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So there we go, I've, I've included a second parameter called include time. What I then have to do is make sure that I use that value in some way in the function's code. So I'm going to write a simple if statement. I'm going to say if include time, then, and then I'm going to do a quick little cheat here and copy this line and paste it in. I'm going to add a little bit of extra code to my date format. I'm going to add in the um, hh colon mm colon ss, so that will format the time as well to the hour, minute, and second. And then else, custom date is just the original version of my date format. Don't forget the end if, which I often do. Um, just by the way, using Boolean values, the simplest way to test if, if this value is true is the simplest way is to simply say if include time. It's perfectly acceptable to say if include time equals true, if that's your preference. But just know that it's absolutely not necessary. If include time is the exact equivalent of if include time equals true. So it's a nice short way to test if a Boolean value holds true. So now that I've declared that extra parameter, again, if I try to run this subroutine without having passed the value into it, I'll be told that there's an, 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 an argument that's not optional. So I know that I haven't passed in enough values, passed enough arguments into my custom date function. So what I'm going to do is, in fact, let me take away all the brackets so you can see the tooltip pop up. If I open the parentheses, you'll see that I get my two parameters listed, date to format, comma, include time. It shows me the one that I'm currently on using the bold text. So the date I'd like to format this time, I'm going to go for the date again. And I'm going to say the um, include time parameter, let's, let's say true. So I will include the time in this version. If I use F8 to begin stepping through that, just so you can see that the if statement works properly. So I've said include time equals true, which means I get the, for, the, the format which includes the time and the function and the subroutine. Switch back to Excel quickly and I get 
the, the time as well. Of course, I didn't pass in a value that actually included a time. So let me just quickly go back to the VB editor, and I'm going to change the date function to now instead. And if I run that this time, switch back to Excel, I get the time as well. Just to show that it does work, if I say false, if I run the subroutine again, I'll get the date without the time. So there we go, making the function that little bit more flexible, again, with the inclusion of another parameter. Now obviously the more parameters you declare for your function, the more work you have to do when you call that function. So sometimes it's nice to be able to make your parameters optional. And you can actually do that to any parameter at all. Any parameter can be optional. The only rule is that all the optional parameters must come after any of the compulsory ones. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to make my include time parameter optional. And it's so simple to do. All I need to do is in front of the parameter name, type in the word optional. And that's as simple as it gets. Now I couldn't have put the date to format parameter after this one. As I say, all the optional parameters must come after all of the compulsory ones. I can also provide a default value for this optional parameter as well. If I wanted to make sure that if a user did not specify include time, it was set to false, for example, I can make that the case by typing equals false after the data type. So there we go, there's how to declare an optional parameter for a function. Uh, very, very, very simple. So what I can do now, again, if I take away the, uh, the parentheses and just display the tooltip again after my custom date parameter, you'll see that the include time parameter is enclosed in a set of square brackets, which indicates that it's optional. And it also tells me what the default value of that parameter is. So if I say, give me the, uh, give me the formatted version of now, I'm not going to specify the include time parameter, but I can still run the subroutine because the parameter now is optional. If I look at the, uh, the, the result, I get today's date formatted without the time. Back to the VB editor. If I wanted to include the time, I would have to type in a comma after the, uh, the, the first parameter and then specify that that is true. One more time, if I just run it once more, just to prove that it still does work, back to Excel, and now get the formatted version of the date with the time included. So there we go. Optional parameters are as simple as you like. Just remember that optional parameters must come after all the compulsory ones. So far, we've only been calling our functions from within the VB editor. But it's interesting to note that you can also call your custom functions from within Excel itself. If I switch back to the workbook and pick a blank cell, I can start typing equals custom date. And it's interesting to note that in this version of Excel, I'm in Excel 2010, if you're calling your function in the same workbook that the function is declared in, you'll see the name appears in the IntelliSense list with a little function symbol next to it. If I press tab to type in the rest of that word, custom date, unfortunately I don't get a tooltip which shows me which parameters I can pass in, but fortunately I know that if I can, I can pass in a date or time, so I'm going to pass in the now function, and I can, I can also specify whether, it, whether or not to include the time, so I'm going to put in the word true to include the time. Close the parentheses, hit enter, and I'll get a formatted version of today's date. It's worthwhile mentioning that I can also see my functions from the function wizard. If I hit the FX button in another blank cell, I can look for my custom functions in the custom function category, or the user-defined category, as it's called. That shows me a list of all of the functions that I've declared, and it shows me a tooltip showing me what the parameters are. It tells me I've got no help available, of course, but if I click OK, I'll get the function arguments dialog. So I can say date to format equals now, again, and the include time function uh, parameter I can set to, I'm going to set it to false this time. I know that that's optional, but I'm going to do it anyway. If I click OK, I'll get another version of the results of my function, um, just as previously. One thing to note about doing this is that this is not the most efficient way to generate this result. Every time your spreadsheet gets recalculated, and I can do that manually by pressing the F9 key if you just watch what happens to this, uh, this, this time here. Every time I press F9, it recalculates cells which 
call your custom date function like so. And that's not true for the other cell, which simply used our function to generate a fixed string of text. This will not change. So because every time you recalculate the worksheet, it calls your function again, it can make spreadsheets relatively inefficient if you're calling custom functions, custom VBA functions, in the worksheet itself. Now the more code you put into a function, the more useful it can become, and the shorter your other subroutines can become as well. You may remember from a few videos ago, we've done this several times in fact, we've, um, we've rated a bunch of our top movies based on their running time. So if I just quickly switch back into Excel, we have this list of films. What we'd like to do is run down column A, and for each film we encounter we'd like to read its length, work out whether it's a short, medium or long film, and place the value into column E. Now to do that, if I switch back to the VB editor, here's some of the code that could do this. It's just one way to achieve that result. It's a fairly basic way of doing it, but it works. So we start at cell A3, and we carry on going down until we hit a blank cell. And for each cell, we pick up the running time from the value of the cell three columns to the right, and then pass it through a rather large if statement to work out which category it should be in, short, medium, long, or epic. What I'd like to do is replace this set of the calculation with a custom function. So I'm going to declare that function at the top of my module. I'm going to call it function film length. And I'm going to give it a single parameter, which is going to be called runtime. And that's going to be an integer. I'm going to also say my function returns a string, because it will return a descriptive piece of text, short, medium, long, or epic. What I can do then is copy my entire if statement from the subroutine I've just written and then paste it in to my function. What I'll also need to do is change the way I'll just tidy up my indenting a little bit as well. What I also need to do is change my um, my if statement so that it says runtime rather than running time. So running time was the variable that I declared in the subroutine. Runtime is the name of the parameter that I've just created. I probably should have called them the same thing, shouldn't I, to save a bit of time. Anyway, there we go. Quick tweak. I also need to make sure that rather than trying to set the value of a cell equal to this specific value, I simply want to make sure that it's my film length function, which returns that value. So I'm going to copy the film length function name and paste it over the top of where it says active cell offset 0.4 value. So again, it's actually a relatively simple function if you think about it. All it does is it takes a number called runtime. It works out if that runtime falls within a certain set of categories. And whichever category it falls into, the function will return a single piece of text. Now, the great thing about this is that even though the function itself is quite simple, because the code itself is quite long, it means that any time we want to categorize our films by length, we can replace an enormous amount of code in each subroutine. So if I scroll down back to my subroutine, I can get rid of several things here. I can get rid of the entire if statement for a start, because that's the job that my function now does. I can also get rid of my variable dim running time. I don't need that anymore either. And I also need to tweak this line here, where it says running time equals active cell offset 0, 0,3. What I actually want to do is set the value of the cell that is offset four columns to the right, and I want to set it to be equal to the result of my film length function. So if I start typing in film length, open a set of parentheses, I need to pass a value to the runtime parameter, and the value that I'm going to pass is the value of the cell that's three columns to the right of the active cell. So if I close the parentheses at the end, get rid of my extra couple of blank lines there, how neat is that? Compare this to the original version of that subroutine, and the code itself is so much shorter and neater. And if you re remember all the times we've actually done this in previous videos in this series, where we've categorized films by length, think about how nice it would have been to have had this function available in the first place. We could have saved an awful lot of typing. So, if I just give this subroutine a quick run to make sure that it actually works, and quickly check back to the spreadsheet first, so we don't have that column of figures in there just yet. If I go back to the VB editor and run this subroutine, we should find that it does the same job as it has done previously. It's just that the code that we have to write to do that is much, much neater. So there's the power of using functions in VBA. 
If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.